What is up, guys? Thanks for watching a Jaguars United live show. I'm super pumped because tonight we are breaking down the film on some of our newest D-line players. If you didn't watch our last D-line show, go back and watch it on YouTube. Uh, it's good. I mean, we broke down the free agency film. We did some guys that we signed already, some of the more high-profile guys, Shaq, Griffin, Marvin Jones, players like that. Make sure to go check it out. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at Jaguars underscore United. And... Uh, let's just jump right into it. I mean, the, the chat is, is is already popping off. If you're not here early in the chat, it's because you don't get uh, notifications from our YouTube. And that means you're not subscribed. So subscribe to the YouTube and make sure you do it. And um, we're going to have all kinds of shows leading up to the draft, after the draft, things like that. I've got my UCF Jaguar shirt on, supporting the uh, the Jaguar homies here. Um, and we're going to jump into some film. We're going to jump into Tyson Alulu first. But before we do that, um, I got to give a shout out to the chat. Kev B, first one in the chat. That's what's up. He says, Duval, Jason. D2 says, hi. Uh, Washington State Jags fan says, Jags. Duval, uh, Gavin Baker says, Duval. Jordan Melvin says, can't wait for Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Robert Adrich says, let's go. Uh, Montana says, y'all better like and subscribe. All right. Um, Justin says, perfect timing. And um, Will says, I like that UCF Jaguar shirt. That's right. That's, what, that's how we do it. Jags Fan Cave says, finally made it to live, Jags Fan Cave. Go check out Jags Fan Cave's um, YouTube channel. Click on it. He's got some good stuff coming, some good stuff that's on there. So, um, man, a lot of love and support tonight in the chat. That's a good sign. That's a good sign for a film breakdown um, for what's going on. So, without further ado, let's jump right into some Tyson Alulu film. I know you guys are excited about that i know that i am too so tyson alulu was brought in to be the nose right we're switching to this three four um you have two three techniques you have a nose tackle that's either shaded on the center or lined up directly head up on the center uh tyson alulu who jags fans may remember i tell this story all the time um only time in my life where i didn't know who a draft who a draftee was um so i was pretty excited when we saw the Jags brought him back after the last couple of years that he had. Honestly, I was going to put a Lulu at the end because he's more of a rotational player. Uh, hasn't played in more than 50% of the defensive snaps probably since like 2014. Um, but man, I like this guy. What's funny is all the D linemen that we signed are they're kind of like all the same guy. <laughs> like they kind of have all the same thing. Not the same guy. They kind of have all the same things in common. And that's that's promising because uh, you could tell Urban Meyer was looking for a specific type of guy to play on this interior defensive line. Um, I know the edge position that Chazon and Allen are going to be playing is technically a D line position in this three four, but um, we're looking at the kind of the interior guys and and what's going to be there. So. Tyson Alulu is going to be lined up, head up here on the center. And, um, man, I feel like Denver is just all, all on the bad end of uh, a lot of plays here in the film. But that's okay. You can, I mean, look at the way he just uses his hands and just gets after the quarterback. I mean, he's going to be lined up, heads up. He's going to give him a good move to the right here. He's going to throw him off and just accelerate toward the quarterback. Like that's what you want out of a nose. Like when you're when you're when you're on a pass down, like this is what you want out of a nose. You want a nose to have the hands and have the strength to be able to do that. I mean, he just absolutely I think it's Lloyd Cushenberry. Um he's not a scrub. I mean, Cushenberry was the center for LSU when Joe Burrow, uh, his offense and all them were there. So, this isn't a scrub. <laughs> this is like a good player and um you know, it's pretty Pretty promising to see that, and I think uh, that's what Alu Alu is going to give us is that pressure from the nose, and um, he's going to be a guy that really gives you rotational piece out of there. I, mean, I don't think he's going to be the most like influential defensive lineman that we pick up this year, but he's going to give you like solid minutes, solid snaps. You want to hear a crazy stat about Tyson Alulu? He's missed four games in eleven seasons. So out of 176 total games, uh, Lulu has co has could have played in since he was drafted. Um, he played in 172 of those. Um, yeah, like I said, he plays in less than, less than 50 percent of the snaps most of the time. But you know, he's a rundown guy. Um, he knows how to get his hands up, just like all these guys in pass plays. So he's gonna have five batted. He had five batted balls this season. I mean, he's always getting his hands up. He's always knocking the ball down. We're going to see a play against the Jags where he gets his hands on a ball and uh, makes a huge play for his defense. Uh, Justin in the chat says, perfect timing. Let's get it. Gavin Baker says, we should trade for Daniel Hunter. Pretty sure he wants out of the Vikings. Well, I think everyone does. 
Um, Will Likens also likes the UCF Jaguar shirt. Let's go. Shea Jones says Logan Cook extended. I expect a full breakdown on Logan Cook. <laughs> Shea, um, I like Logan Cook. High school quarterback. What could go wrong? Robert Adsert says he loves free agency. Bradley Williams says what's good. Washington State Jags fan says yes, sir. Love the breakdown, buddy. No problem. Um, no YouTube jail, says Robert Adsert. Look, here, I think we might have found a hack courtesy of our man UCF Jaguar. See, he told me to pull the clips from the end zone film because I guess CBS doesn't own the rights to the end zone film, so they're less likely to get flagged. Um, and wow, I mean, he, he was right. He was spot on. Um, let's pull up another film here of Tyson Alulu. Let's pull up the one against the Jaguar since like I already kind of teased that one. But you guys may remember this play uh, that happened in Jacksonville. Um, <laughs> he's lined up here again at the nose. Look, this is what we need. We we don't have a true nose. I mean, Devon Hamilton, he could probably do it, um, but we haven't seen him do it. We've seen Tyson Alulu do it, and he and he can do it. Let's let's, let's run through this play here. The Jags gonna be in their shotgun formation, um, two tight end set. Jags loved that two tight end set. You know, they didn't really have a tight end. Alulu's gonna come from the middle, get his hands up on the ball. Minka Fitzpatrick's gonna get under it, and he's gonna take it back to I think like the forty. Yeah. <laughs> tackle from James Robinson like dude, the dude the dude obviously never played a down of defense in in high school because he like wrapped up around the neck but we will see again look he's like so this is the this is the shade so if we're, if we're talking about a, a nose tackle um, and we say he's in shade position this is what we mean he's like we call this the outside shoulder of the center so um he's going to give Linder kind of a a look here and look I mean Linder's going to do a Good job of at least is standing him up, but just the instincts of getting his hands up in the air. I mean, it looks like it hits his shoulder pads here, but I mean, just the instincts of that. And like I said, he had five batted balls this year. This wasn't like a one-time thing. This wasn't something that um, he did once. This is something that he did play after play after play. And even looking back at the 2019 film, he just has batted ball after batted ball. And, um, you know... That's what Urban's looking for. We're going to see with Jihad Ward. We're going to see with Roy Robertson. Like, they all get their hands up. They're all big, strong guys. They're ball, all athletic. I mean, I think they're all around 300 pounds. I mean, the, they're your typical 3-4 interior D linemen that the Jags had none of. I mean, they kind of went after Gunter. They kind of went after Woods last year to kind of be that role. But these guys are younger, uh, bigger, stronger than all those guys. So I'm pumped about it. I'm pumped about the pick for sure. Um, Jordan Maine says, is Chazon going to start next year? Yeah, I think he will. Um, I think he'll start at one of the um, edge positions. There's a strong side edge and a weak side edge. I, I don't know. Josh Allen played a lot of strong side edge last year, but I could see Urban kind of moving him to the weak side, kind of giving him more of a chance to make a play in the backfield, kind of giving him a chance to um, do something like – without being double covered or about being ran away from play side and things like that. Colin Wicker says, isn't Malcolm Brown a nose? Yeah. Malcolm Brown's also a nose. Um, I think they're going to split snaps. I mean, look, they're both guys that played 50% of snaps to their former teams. Sound quality is sounding good. Thank you, Charlie boy. Dude, look, all we do is get better around here. Dude. Just, I expect you guys to get better. Um, we're getting better too. All right. This is my favorite play. I think from Tyson Alulu. Um, for sure. So again, we're gonna see him. Uh, it's like this, you know, three eye position. You know, lined up on the in, uh, inside shoulder of the guard um, against the Bengals, and they're in their eleven formation. Looks like they're gonna. I mean, this looks like a. He's gonna be a pass play, but fortunately, they read their keys. They they motion in a receiver here, and we're gonna see Alu Alu. Look, like this is what you want. Like, you bring it, like, when they run the ball in this inside zone at a gun, which basically is what the NFL has moved to. If they're going to run the ball, it's going to be inside zone at a, in gun, right? Especially these teams that are like throwing at every play. There, there's going to be an attempt. There's a double team here, and then 60 is going to move up to the next level, but he still gets a good piece of a Lulu, and the center's trying to double team him here. I mean, look at all this traffic. I mean, there's four guys within like a two yard radius right here. And then, like, the sign of a good interior defensive lineman is his ability to kind of take on a block, keep his wits about him, find the ball carrier, and then if he can make a tackle, that's even, like, bonus, especially when he's in this, like, wash situation. And Alulu is, like, while being blocked and still being engaged with the center, he's going to find the running back in the backfield. I mean, that's what you want. <laughs> 
I mean, that's why he was brought in. I mean, that's that's why you pay the man the big bucks is to be able to do that because that's why he's being brought in. It's to help us against the run. We were abysmal against the run last year, and bringing in a guy like him who was graded out as PFFs like all second team because he was so efficient every time he was on the field. He was so efficient every time. Um, I liked it. Gavin Baker says, do you think these signings are going to elevate Josh Allen's play? Absolutely. I mean, we see that. I mean, that's the common trend amongst defensive linemen is if there is help around them, they're going to be good. They're, I mean, their play is going to be elevated. I mean, look at Ngakwe. He's popping off with that D-line with Calais Campbell and Malik Jackson and all those guys that were on that D-line. Of course he's going to pop off. And when he has to do it on his own and he doesn't have as much help, I mean, you see his stats kind of suffering. And this is not an isolated case of just Yannick Ngakwe. We see that happen like over and over and over again with defensive linemen. So absolutely, the additions of these players are definitely going to help. If you had to guess right now, this is Jordan Maine. He says, who would you be your starting lineup for our D-line? Oh, man. Honestly, I would put a Lulu at, at nose, especially on – I mean, I like him. I like him. Um, it's like his play style. I like the way he – again, he's very efficient in the snaps that he's given. Um, at strong side three technique, I, I think I like Taven Bryan and I know he like worked himself out of the starting rotation, but I, I think Taven Bryan is going to be the guy, um, that does that. Um, the other side, um, that's a good question. I mean, I think that Roy Robertson, um, Harris is going to be that other D tackle. And look, when, when he put in 2019, when he played in 15 games, Roy Robertson, Harris was, Really efficient. Um, I got a lot of quarterback hits and pressures, and that's kind of a good indicator for me of the defensive lineman and what type of player that they are. But, I mean, that would be my guess along the three. And then you have Chazon and um, Allen, you know, coming off the edge. 3-4, he's a good linebacker. Chazon's natural position, yeah. Uh, Jags fan cave, how, how many snaps do you think Alulu plays a game? Um, that's a good question. I would say 30 to 40. 30 to 40 snaps a game. I, mean, I think it's a solid amount for him. Um, I think I, that, that's what I expect out of him. Sorry, I'm also watching this uh, Florida Oral Roberts game. It's getting into the last uh, minute, of 30 seconds of the game. Actually, it looks like it's about to be over. But anyways, um, so I think we have one more film here on Alulu before we move on to the next guy. It is a strip sack. We like our strip sacks around here in Jacksonville, don't we? All right, so here we go. We're going to see him. i got to figure out exactly where he's lined up at. looks like he's lined up in his nose tackle position um, right over the center. Josh Allen's going to bark out some uh, commands here, and let's see here at the snap. Okay, I like the D-line's all moving left. Okay, so there's obviously some sort of like stunt or something coming or maybe a delayed blitz from this linebacker maybe coming. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And because of that, um, it allows the – defense to put pressure on the offensive line to show uh, gaps in their blocking formation. And here we're going to see that this right guard gets a little overwhelmed by this little stunt move here. No one's going to pick up a Lulu. He's going to get in the backfield, get his hand on the ball. He's going to force a fumble. We're going to do a little dance right here. Old tight. It's hard to believe this is the same guy that we drafted in like 2011. It really is. Like I can't believe it that uh, the, it was come full circle and here we are. Look at that move there. Ooh, that's a good view of that move right there. Mm, a little swim move. Dude, Tyson's got that swim move down. In almost every film that he has a good play on, he, he just kills that swim move right there. Good acceleration to the ball. Gets his hands on it. Dude, that's that's it. Dude. If you can do that, um, man, you're going to play a long time in this league. And we can see Tyson did. And he does for sure. Uh, did UCF Jaguar, he listened to me on the game pass. So let's go. Love this shirt, man. UCF Jaguar, you know that's why we do it. Hey, I appreciate it. The Game Pass tip was actually might have been what saved my life. I may not get uh, – I haven't even gotten an error warning or a warning from um, YouTube. So I appreciate it, UCF. That's that's awesome. All right, so just, I mean, to close it up on a Lulu, I mean, what is there to say about him? I mean, he, I, there's a couple plays where he played uh, the three technique. Um, he's mostly a nose. I was looking through his stats. In 2015 on the Jags, he had three targets as a receiver and two catches. Does anyone remember that? Like I, I, it wasn't that long ago. It was five years ago. Does anyone remember a Lulu getting three targets? <laughs> like, like wait, was it goal line? Like, what? What is the only time in his career that he got uh, targets as a wide receiver? So he must have been in some like jumbo goal line formation. But uh, that just like stood out to me as as pretty funny, um, 
but yeah, man, the dude's going to stay available, which is the best ability. As someone said in the chat, um, look, man, I'll take Tyson all day. If he can play 40% of the snaps, anchor the run game, get some good pressure with his swim move. I think he moves in a starter, at least on first and second down on this defense, especially in a three, four, where you need guys like that. You need uh, rotational pieces. Um, so yeah, man, that's it. Um, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, I think let's do, we're going to do Roy Robertson Harris because I kind of like his play style a little bit better. Look, I like Jihad Ward. Um, I, I just don't know what capacity he's going to be playing. I mean, Urban Meyer even talked about how he's didn't really do a lot of evaluating him because he, uh, Joe Cullen's recommendation came so high. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's see what we get out of Roy here. Roy Robertson Harris huge guy i mean i like his size a lot um i really like his ability to bull rush the quarterback um he's hard to block he's just so big and strong that uh he's a really hard guy to block here so uh, let's take a look at what we have here all right so he played on this bears d line with, with khalil mack and you know that you know that has there's something to be said for that for sure but um, his strength and his uh, size and athleticism, his hand strength is just a one of a kind here. Okay, so here's going to be lined up on the inside shoulder of the tackle. But with this guy lined up here, he pretty much knows he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one with this left guard here. And I, I like this. I like this um, as a D tackle. I kind of like my chances here. I mean, this is a wide pass set. I mean, this dude is set up wide. He's expecting a bull rush. <laughs> like, this offensive lineman did his homework. He's expecting a bull rush. He's getting his center of, of gravity, his base low. Um, he's going to be expecting this bull rush here. So he's expecting it, and he still <laughs> can do nothing about it. Just gets absolutely bull rushed. And the play is incomplete. And, like, you know, he's only going to get a pressure on this play. But this is the type of thing that Robertson Harris does is he doesn't get stats. I mean, I don't. I think his sacks last year, he had, like, two or three. Um, not a guy that, like, is going to blow you away with his tackles for loss or anything like that. But he does – the intangibles. He does things like this, like absolutely dust this left guard right here and just push him into the quarterback. I mean, 77 just gets abused there, causes the incompletion, and, I mean, that's it. That's what we want. That's how it's done. Bringing a guy like that to, to line up with Tyson Alulu, and now this interior of, of your D-line is now, like, very dangerous. Uh, looks like that Oral Roberts beat Florida. So Oral Roberts will be moving on. I'm sure that busted everyone's brackets. Uh, Florida blew a lead. They were winning most of the game, but I guess that's how it goes nowadays. Um, Jordan Main and UCF Jaguar have a little conversation here in the chat about his channel. Go check out UCF Jaguar's channel. If by some chance you haven't, make sure you go do that. King David said, yo, and finally the communication feed. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that means, but I, I probably missed it. Uh, Jordy Duval says, go Jags. That's right, Jordy. That's right. Uh, if you just jumped in, we're breaking down film. Um, Jordan Main says 77 is trash. Come on, Jordan. I mean, <laughs> let's watch it. Oh, you're not watching this. You don't have the same screen I have. Yeah, he was trash. He was trash. Wow. Washington State Jags fan with a $50 donation says, as a fellow Jags fan, I salute you, Jag Power. Dude. Wa State Jags fan. I, I don't even know what to say. That's the largest donation I've ever gotten on here. And that's just hands down. That makes me emotional. I'm an emotional guy. But uh, thank you for that, man. I hope you enjoy the, the channel, man. I, I mean, man, that's that's great, man. I, I don't know what to say. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Let's just keep going to some film. If you just jumped in, we're looking at some film of some players. Um, we already saw Tyson Alulu. Uh, now we're looking at Roy Robertson Harris, the 6'5". 300 pound defensive tackle who um, out of UTEP and and look all these guys are like kind of the same like <laughs> they're high motor guys they're bull rush guys um, Roy Robertson Harris only played in eight games in 2020 uh, he had a shoulder injury then he was out uh, but he was getting 30 snaps per game before then that's a decent rotational piece in 2019 he played in 15 games he had two and a half sacks in 2019 30 tackles um, 10 quarterback hits again very efficient at getting at the quarterback, but just that big, strong guy that, that really pushes uh, the line of scrimmage and, and really pushes what's happening. So let's look at a sack here. And, um, oh, the Vikings. Whew. The Vikings are line. All right. Kirk Cousins is going to get a little taste of Roy Robertson here. And this, might, this is actually uh, 
was this? No, this is 2019. Okay, I have it. I'm glad I haven't marked here. This is 2019, so I had to go back. Like he only played eight games. I had to go back, but this so this is 2019 film, but it still kind of shows you what um, Robertson Harris can do here. Uh, don't worry about that. That's a that wasn't real. Okay, so I like this move here because he's going to show you his motor. When I say he's a high motor guy, I mean he's legit. Does not stop pressuring the quarterback or pursuing the quarterback. And like, uh, like I think about the guys that we have on the team now, like Smoot, um, you know, Devon Hamilton, like. They're guys that like have a good move. They have they have like a good move every now and then, and uh, they'll beat their defender and they'll make it a sack or they'll make a tackle for loss. And you're like, oh man, that was a really good move. That guy could be good if he could just consistently do that move. The guys that Urban have brought in, uh, Alulu, Robertson, Harris, Jihad Ward, they're like high motor guys constantly. Like watch here, like we're gonna see him. He's lined up here. Like this is like a five technique alignment. He's lined up on the tackle. Like. With this guy lined up out here in the nine technique, we kind of figure there's going to be some sort of like shade and shift over from the offensive line. And initially, he's going to get, you know, grabbed pretty well here by the guard in the center. Uh, the center actually ends up getting his hands on him. And here, I mean, this is a clean pocket for Kirk Cousins. And uh, traditionally for the Jags in 2019, especially, you see players like giving up here. Um, like, okay, play's over. We're done we're not going to see that out of him. Watch him here. Like he's engaged. He fights to get the defender off of him, goes after the quarterback. Um, I think that was an offensive holding that the ref threw there. But I just love this motor here. Doesn't give up on the play. He gets double teamed. He gets pushed across to different offensive linemen. He just makes a great play. A little dance here. I like it, Jihad. I mean, look, uh, we needed a, we've needed a high motor guy for a while, and I'm just glad that we finally got one. Uh, King David says, "In I tuned in before and it was miss and it was missing, but it's all good." Okay, well I'm glad you can hear it. Again, Washington State Jags fan, dude. I gotta say thank you again, dude. Fifty dollars, whoo, man. I'm still sweating over here. I appreciate that. All right, let's get into our next piece of film here. This is our last one on our boy Roy Roberts Harrison. Um, I like this. <laughs> I like them all. This is a good tackle for loss here. Okay. Um, I love this end zone film. So this is going to be a little bit tighter of a formation here, a little bit tighter, you know, alignment. See, before he was in the five technique pretty much out here. We're going to see here he's in that, like, it depends on what you call it, depending on your coach and, and where you're at here. Uh, you know, a, a four-eye technique, I guess you would call that. Um, and this is a front that I think you'll see the Jags run a lot, to be honest with you. If you notice, the Rams are in their 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back. And the Bears are pretty much in their, like, base, okay? you got five across here, one here, and then they're going to have, you know, four defensive backs. Is, is, that my, is my math right there? I, I don't know. There's And uh, Cleo Mack here, he's obviously going to draw the attention from the right tackle. But we're going to see at the snap, um, they're going to put Cooper Cup in motion. Now, the play is designed for the D-line to stunt right at the snap, which is a good call. This is a good call to this play. Um hats off to the defense coordinator with the Bears but he's going to absolutely just penetrate to the backfield and make a play now you got to be careful knifing up the knifing up field the way he does here but in this situation he totally just blows the tackle off or the guard off the ball gets into the backfield makes a tackle for a loss like stopping defenders from getting to the edge like, like you have players that are designed to set the edge like 50 you can't see him because my fat head and the screen is here but there's 50 here he's just he's supposed to be setting the edge and if you can have a defender that can penetrate like this get to the backfield and make a play like you never have to worry about setting the edge you never have to worry about teams beating you with speed there was such a gimmicky offenses nowadays where they're going to try to move the ball laterally on you and move and it's not just north and south but it's east and west and a, a guy like Roy Robertson Harris is going to give you the ability to make plays in the backfield because of his uh, motor and his ability his strength and to get into the backfield again this is a guy that I think look plays 40 snaps this year and um or I'm sorry, 40 snaps a game. But he's going to be a guy that just really gets after the ball and gets after the quarterback. So um, I love it. I really do. Jordan Maine says, please tell me Josh Jones isn't starting strong safety next year. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, that we, I think that Gerard Wilson maybe gets his um, starting spot, and then um, Jenkins is the other one. So And, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Washington State Jackson says, dude, I agree on the high motor of Jihad Ward. We're about to get to that film, Washington State Jags fan. Ydoc5000 says, just getting here. What's up, boys? What's up, Ydoc? 
glad you're just getting here. And what's up with the notifications, dude? You're telling me whatever you're doing is more important than this? I'm just kidding. Uh, C's up says, really think we're, we're going 3-4 this year and with how we're set up. Yeah, I think 100%. I have no doubt in my mind that we're 3-4. I would, I would bet a heavy sum of money that we're going to be 3-4. All right. So we've looked at a little bit of Tyson Lulu. Uh, we looked at a little bit of Roy Robertson Harris, um, both big dudes. Um, now we got our third guy, Jihad Ward, who um, didn't really see a lot of production last year, kind of came to the team more because of the recommendation of Joe Colon. Um, but Urban Meyer had some high things to say about the way that Colon was talking about him. And look, I'm all about coaches. I'm all about coaches defending their guys and coaches know what they're looking for. So if Colin came in and was like, get this guy, like, I'm here for it. And all the, the interviews and press conferences that he's doing kind of makes it seem like he's a Duval guy, if you know what I mean. Um, but another guy who bats down a lot of ball. I mean, between these three guys, like, if there was a filter on stats and you filtered past deflections, you would have gotten a Lulu, Jihad Ward, and Roy Robertson Harris, like, one, two, three. Like, it seems like that that's what – Urban Meyer was filtering when he picked these guys up. He, he, I think he was also filtering 6'5", 300, because Jihad Ward and Roy Robertson Harris are both just massive humans. Um, but Jihad Ward was a second-round pick in 2016, not even that long ago. Um, this last year, he was on like the COVID list. I think he had COVID for a while. Um, but still three sacks regardless. Um, he gets downhill quick. And what I like about him is like his – like I don't say this a lot about players, but like his balance, dude. Like I love when D linemen have balance, and I think we're gonna see a couple plays where Jahad Ward's like balance, like really comes into it. All right, so um, yeah, I like this. This is it. This is the kind of the play I was talking about here. Switch you over to the film cam here. All right, so Jahad Ward is is you know he's gonna be coming with some speed here now, okay? But what I like about him is that he's able to keep his balance. And he's able to get after the quarterback. So he's going to be lined up here. And it, I know it kind of looks like the same position that Roy Robertson Harris was playing in the film. And it's because it kind of is. And they could be rotating for each other. Like, would not surprise me. Um, between Taven Bryan and Dewan Smoot and uh, Devon Hamilton, like, there's going to be a lot of rotational pieces going around. So um, I like it. And I like what this is going to be doing. Um, Josu Rivera says a, with a $5 donation. Says, I was driving, but I'm here now. Are you going to do a mock draft for us? Sorry, I don't know what I missed. Dude, thank you for the Josu. Thank you for the $5. Dude, you, dude you're killing it, man. Like, I, I love when you're in the chat because, uh, man, I just you, you bring some some good knowledge bombs to the chat. But the $5 donation, all I can say is thank you. Dude, I'm humbled by you guys. I, I mean, I really, really am. Washington State Jags fan with the $50 donation earlier, like, I'm humbled, dude. Like I do this because I love it, and I love talking to Jags fans. And this is just awesome, man. It really is. Um, all right, back to Jod Ward here. Jod Ward's gonna be lined up on the outside shoulder of the guard. Um, I like what he does at the snap. Right, he's obviously gonna get in. He's gonna try to. He's gonna first try to get there with speed, which I don't. I'm, I mean, I don't necessarily prefer the way that he got it. I don't know. Okay, I don't necessarily like the way he's kind of c- trying to come across the, the guard's body like this. Um, he does get kind of blocked down and into his own guy. But if you're going to make a mistake, and if you're going to be reckless, what do coaches always say? Make a mistake full speed. Be reckless full speed. And what you're going to see is he's just going to drive at the quarterback, and he's going to get a pressure and a sack because he's able to keep his balance. Look, even though he's being blocked, like he had multiple opportunities to fall here. Um, in the past, the Jags D lineman, right here, you would, I mean, look at this, dude. <laughs> this is a 6'5", 300-pound athlete with literally his entire body weight shifted off of his center of gravity, and he's going to still keep his balance, get into the quarterback, and get a sack. Loved that play. I uh, had to highlight that one. I mean, that was one that I just was like, all right, dude. I mean, because play, I mean, it wasn't just his play. Play after play after play, the dude's balance and the ability not to, to get pushed over. And even though he's being engaged, he still continues with his high motor to get after the quarterback, uh, which is mind-blowing. Harley Morell says, let's go United. Always got to support the channel. Thank you, Harley. I appreciate it. Nick F says, finally back. I've missed the past couple live streams. Nick F, bro, it's okay. 
we we are popping nowadays. If you didn't know, we're popping off nowadays. So glad you're back, Nick F nineteen. Jordan Main says, "How do you feel about Joe Cullen as DC?" I like Joe Cullen. Um, he's a guy that wasn't given a chance because of his past and mistakes he made in 2008 had like blackballed him from the defense coordinator position, which is ludicrous in my opinion. But that's the type of guy I can take chances on. His his track record since then has been nothing but perfect. And if a guy like Urban Meyer is going to be like, this dude's deserving of a defense coordinator job, I trust Urban. Look, I'm going to make sure to say in Urban we trust because I don't care what the dude does. I'm going to sit here and talk about – um, a player who played in eight games last year. Uh, Urban's bringing in a guy with the recommendation of Joe Colon. Like that's, I like the way this team is being built. I really, really do. Uh, Nick F says Joe Colon did a great job getting a lot of production out of non superstars. So I think we can really see a big change with these players who are currently viewed as rotational guys and promising guys. See Nick F, that's a good point. That's a good point. Like what about a guy like Taven Bryan? Like it's popular to hate Taven Bryan. Like it is it is not no way. If you like Taven Bryan, you get just ostracized. Twitter, YouTube, anywhere. Like, oh, what if Taven kind of has like a bounce back year this year? Like, what if Taven kind of pops off this year and you're like, oh, maybe it was like a product of like the coaching rather than him. I know it's far fetched and I know it may not happen. I'm just food for thought. UCF Jaguar says the Jags YouTube is by far the best community. The most supportive, great passion, and knowledgeable. By far better than Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah, Jags Reddit is kind of all over the place. I mean, I'm on there a lot. It's a good source of information. Um, Jags Facebook. I don't even touch Jags Facebook. I couldn't even tell you the first thing about that. Uh, Jags Twitter. I'm all over Jags Twitter, but I know what you mean. It's a pretty toxic community. But Twitter in generally is that type of place. Um, I love it, by the way. But I also know that like it's a, it's huge like cancel culture and like you gotta be careful what goes on at Twitter, um, whatever. Teflon Don says Duval. What up, Teflon Don? I'm so glad that you're here. We're breaking down film. You kind of caught it at the tail end, but that's okay. We got two more clips of Jahan Ward at least. All right. The other thing I like to look in defensive linemen, and I know I say this about every single trait that I bring up, so I know it gets kind of watered down, but I don't care is their ability to, to chase down the run from the backside. All right, John Ward's going to be lined up here on the weak side. Weak side end. This is what makes me kind of think that uh, this is where he may end up in Jacksonville. He may end up on this weak side um, end position here. Um, look, you asked me who I think the starters were. Look, 45 right here. Because this is the Ravens, right? So is, you can assume that the Jags will run a similar type of defense. 45 here is Josh Allen. Uh, this guy here, I uh, would expect to be Taven Bryan. Um, this guy here, Tyson Alulu slash uh, Malcolm Brown. Uh, this guy here is obviously going to be Jihad Ward slash uh, Robertson Harris. I mean, I like it. I like what's happening here, so... Let's see what happens here. It's gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be. I think it's an outside zone. I think either an outside zone or a buck sweep. Um, I don't know. I don't know the, the offense here. Okay, so I guess this is, this is just you know an outside zone with the pulling guards. He sees his tackle pulls away from him. Look, he's, his first key is obviously the tackle. I mean, he sees the plays moving away from him. This is some good speed. If Mahomes, uh, if Mahomes would have kept it, ooh, I don't know, boys. Actually, I didn't see that the first time. Ooh, I don't know, but I like the backside. I like the chase down. I like the intensity. Look, we'll just say that he read it right. We'll just say that he kept his keys on the running back and on the ball. He watched. We call it watching the triangle in the backfield. We'll just say he did that. And um, but oof, man, if Mahomes would have held that ball, he, that op, that speed option out would have been uh, pretty nasty. Uh, Nick F says I like the Taven point. Judon is way better than Taven, but a lot of his prod production was schemed up so we can get Taven one on one. He may be able just to have a good amount of production just off of his athleticism. Yeah, no, I agree. Teflon Don uh, says Teflon John says start over. It's cool. Haha. <laughs> Ravenclaw ride. Go Jags. Ready for the draft. Yeah, we're gonna do a live show for the draft. Um, I think. We're, I'm trying to get like a one time we went to like this uh, bar restaurant and we had so much fun. We had like random people on that would come on. Like I, we might do that again. We'll see. 
Whydog5000 says, what do you think we're going to do at tight end? I'm guessing we draft Pat Frermuth as our starter with the 45th pick. I brought this point up, and I'm, I'm not going to harp on it because I harped on it on the last video. And if you haven't watched the last video, I assume that you're going to go back and watch the last video. Um, and if you did, I'm not going to repeat it again. But remember, like receiving tight end and Colin Johnson, they're going to be eating each other's snaps and targets up. If you want Colin Johnson to pop off, uh, those snaps are going to come at the expense of receiving tight end. If you want a good receiving tight end, those snaps are going to come at the expense of Colin Johnson because that's your fourth wide receiver, and you don't typically line up with four wide receivers and a tight end unless you're an empty, which I would guess is probably maybe four to five plays a game max. Um, I'm cool with Colin Johnson. Give me a guy that can come in on rundowns, James O'Shaughnessy, um, the other guy we picked up. Like, I'm cool with, with that. I don't think tight ends as big of a need – as some people think. If you fall into a good tight end that can play that big receiver or can play that speed inside threat, then put him out there. But if you don't have him, like, don't force it. And I think that's what Urban's doing. Jags Fan Cave says, I feel like Taven Bryan's having a bounce back year. It's like expecting Jokel to have a bounce back year when he was playing. If he wasn't a first round pick, he would have been gone. Yeah, that's true. Jokel was really bad. That's a good point. Robert Azard says, Hamilton can move people. Yeah. I like I like Hamilton. His his college film is, is like is, is pretty impressive. Um, look, the guy was a rookie last year and he played pretty well. Give him some time. I, you're right. I'm with you. I like Devon Hamilton too. Uh, Teflon Don says, "Man, I want Colin to pop off. Me too." And I think he will. Um, I think he will for sure. All right, let's look at this play. This um, is another Jihad Ward play, and then we had to go back to 2019 again. Our boy Jihad Ward was on the COVID list. We missed him some some plays last year. He didn't get a full. Uh, a full film's worth in, so we had to we had to kind of you know dip into 2019 to get some film here, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so this is when he was with the Colts. So he was with the Colts in 2019, and uh, we're gonna see kind of what his skill set is um, as a ceiling here, right? So we know what he can do. We know he did for the Ravens. We know that he can he can get after the ball. He can he's strong player, high motor, um, deflects balls, gets his hands up. He had a bunch of deflections last year. Uh, did I look at did I get his deflections last year or this year? No, but he had a bunch. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this play here again, same position. Uh, we lined up on that outside shoulder of that guard. He's pretty much one-on-one -on -one with the guard. Um, nice little kick step there by 77, but lose. <laughs> oh. I mean, when you're just stronger than the other guy, you, you just push him down. <laughs> you just, you just eat him up. Like, Oh my goodness. That's it. That's the ceiling right there. Look, if we can get that, if we can get this out of Jihad Ward, then I think we're good. I think we're fine because, I mean, you're going to be thinking, I mean, how much speed are we going to be having coming off the edge with Allen and Chazon? Not to mention, like, Miles Jack, not to mention our nickel blitzes. Like, so much speed coming off the edge. If you can get pressure like this from the inside from one of these guys, from Tyson Alulu, from Roy Robertson Harris, from Jihad Ward, and I think that's why Urban Meyer went after this type of guy. Like, all three of these guys have a bull rush. But I, and that, there's no other way to put it. They're like experts at the bull rush. Like if you're playing Madden, um, they get those little superstar icons. Like all three of these guys should have bull rush icons because not only do they push their offensive lineman into the backfield and crash, collapse the pocket, they also get their hands up. Uh, they deflect balls. They are disruptive. Another big thing about defensive linemen on the interior on a, in a 3-4 is you don't want to get pushed off the line of scrimmage. Your ability to hold the line of scrimmage on run plays. Um, I showed a bunch of sacks and pressures because they're sexier. But I could have showed clips of one-yard gains and two-yard gains that they stuffed the run on first and ten, and now it's second and nine. And again, a tackle. That's the only thing it is on the stat line. But and these guys had a bunch of these, and this is why their PFF grades were so high. But their stats, like the sacks, don't really like stand out. Is because they can't get moved off the line of scrimmage. And when you can't stop the run, you bring in guys like that. Um, all three of these guys, they're all 300 pounds. Um, a, little, a little shorter, but Jihad Ward and Robertson Harris are both 6'5". Like, these are massive dudes that this D-line went from like a bunch of rotational pieces. I mean, remember Doug Costin? Like, I mean, people love Doug Costin, but I don't think Doug Costin sees very many snaps this year because he's instantly in a rotation of like actually talented veterans. I mean, I'm 
I'm excited. The D line was went from an issue of need, uh, a problem, to now it's like, all right, like I think we're actually straight there. Teflon John says, um, I'm from Georgia Tech. I love Colin Johnson to turn into Calvin Johnson. Well, that's pretty lofty, but um, Colin Johnson is a good player. Jags History says, how about move Colin Johnson to tight end? I don't know how good Colin Johnson is at blocking, um, but keep in mind, Tyler Eifert, when we signed him away from Cincinnati, he didn't play, he didn't play any blocking snaps. CJ Uzma was was the blocking tight end and, and the number one tight end, and Eifert would just come in on passing plays. So the only difference between what Tyler Eifert did in Cincinnati and what Colin Johnson did for us last year was the name of their position, but they played like the exact same, to be honest. Because, I mean, Eifert rarely lined up on the end line of scrimmage when he was in Cincinnati in his last season. Uh, Brent Papineau. What's up, Brent? He says, draft feels like it's developing into best player available more than I thought it would. Well, I mean, I think that's the goal for a lot of these GMs is to get to that position. And the Jags had so many needs that they had to. So, you know, I love it. Beautiful. Philip Butcher says, darn, man, I freaking missed most of it. Dude, Philip, it's okay. It's partly my fault. I don't have like a set schedule. Um, but UCF Jaguars are right. He says, uh, just rewatch it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, just rewatch it tomorrow. Um, I I usually have some a bunch of snafus that I have to fix, but I don't know. Maybe not. Jags Fan Cave, if Barmore is still available at 25, do you consider taking him? I don't. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, the second I say I don't, I, I start thinking like, dude, a lot of, everyone we signed are like one-year deals, dude. Like, um, I think everyone that we talk about in this video is on a one-year deal. You know, we what do we do we have a long term answer at D tackle? Do we have a solution that we can look forward to in the future at D tackle? I don't think so. Smoot doesn't do much for me. Costin doesn't do much for me. I know people are big on Devon Hamilton, but yeah, I think after talking it through, <laughs> I think you still do take Barmore there. That's a good question, Jags fan cave. That is a really good freaking question. If I could get inside of the mind of Urban Meyer and figure out if he's trying to win in the next two years or he's trying to win the next five years, but uh, yeah, I think you do take Barmore. But I think he ends up, I think he ends up shooting up the draft. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Philip Butcher says, "What up, United? What up, Phil? Glad you're here." Harley Morrell says, "I like Malcolm Brown and Hamilton over Brian, but we'll see. A lot of share snaps, like you said." To be fair, I haven't done any film evaluation on Malcolm Brown yet. So, Harley, you are probably right. Um, I can admit I had an uneducated opinion when I said Taven Bryan would start over Malcolm Brown. I think I thought I saw Malcolm Brown playing more nose, like the way Alou Alou does. I don't think Brian plays the nose. Again, I don't I didn't film yet. Nick F., I wanted uh, Barmore at 25, but I'm thinking we'd go for like a Morig or a, or maybe even a corner or slash Friar Muth. I don't think we go corner there. I think we go offensive lineman, man. If we can get Alex Leatherwood there, phew, dude, like we need help on the O line. That's the only position we haven't addressed in free agency. Um, gotta fix that O line. There, the right side is a glaring issue. It's, I mean, the right tackle. I know, I know that he's young. I know Juwan Taylor is young, but he doesn't really show me that he's like can handle it yet. Um, AJ can right guard. Don't even throw I mean, Will Richardson. I mean, what a joke that was. Uh, Philip Butcher. Yeah, we still need a superstar D tackle. Yeah, I agree. Jimmy Popcorn says Morig at 25. A lot of people like Trevor Morig. A lot of people do. Robert Adrich says trade up for Pitts, Chase, or Waddle. You're not going to get Jamar Chase. You're not going to get Waddle. And you're not going to get Pitts. I, I, I don't think, I mean, I would, Robert, that's what I would do. Like if, it were Madden, and I had the draft capital the Jags had, I would trade up for one of those guys. I don't think it's realistic because I think all three of those guys, I mean, is Waddle realistic? Maybe. Maybe Waddle is, but he was, I mean, he was injured, coming off a serious injury. Uh, Jimmy Popcorn says, we still need another safety. We could get away with what we have. We, we could get away with it. And I don't even know how they've evaluated Daniel Thomas, to be fair. Zach Jones says, we need to bolster the O-line, dominate O-lines, make up for the whole offense. Zach Jones, I'm with you 100%. Robert Adger says UCF safety. 
Yeah, I forgot his name too. Harley Morrill says fax O line is key. I think people are like, yeah, like, O line's a big deal. O line is a big deal. Philip Butcher says, I think Barmore is overrated. He quit on a lot of plays. Watch his early tape. He, I mean, his scout evaluation, a lot of people said that he does not have a high motor. He does quit on plays. From the looks of what Urban Meyer goes after in free agency, Barmore's not going to fit what he wants. Um, because of that, um, I think you're right. Uh, but, I mean, Barmore, when, did he even start this year? I don't think he was even a starter. That's not good. That's not good. Like, uh, That's not good. Can you go in the first round if you're a, okay? So if you're not a starter, that means there's like plays that like you're not as good as your teammate at. Unless you're on the same, unless you're like the Alabama's wide receiver room, is there really a reason you want to take a guy in the first round that can't? That's not a starter. I don't know. Robert Adler says um, Leatherwood. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, I think Leatherwood's the answer. Nick F. I really don't think Leatherwood goes round one. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know. I think you see a run on tackles. Tackles is a premium position, and I think every year you see a run on tackles, and I think it's going to happen eventually. And there's a lot of good ones, so you never know. Philip Butcher says, nice shirt. I want one. You can get one. UCF Jaguar sells them. I was actually the first one to get this shirt. I don't know if you all know that. I was the first one, and it was hand-delivered by UCF Jaguar. So let's hear you guys uh, say that about your UCF Jaguar shirt. Brent Papano says, our first four draft picks could all start if they are the right guys. Yeah, let's say they draft a right guard, um, a safety, a uh, linebacker, and a tight end. <laughs> They're all starting. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. But then you might not be going best player available, but you might be. I don't know. Nick F says, as great as Pitts is, it'd be better to get two players who are good instead of getting Pitts who can be very good. We need a lot of young, good players, and we can get four in the top 50. Um, I think Pitts is the last guy amongst the top tier players that I would disagree with you about that on. Um, Trevor Lawrence, you know, the quarterbacks, um, and then Kyle Pitts. That's a guy that I think I would sacrifice some draft picks for. He's that good, and he can change offenses literally in a second. I mean, you add Kyle Pitts to this offense, and then we're like 2022, 2023, we're like scary good with LaVisca, Marvin Jones, hits <laughs> we're scary good with that um if Radens is there at 33 maybe grab him i've not enough on him jimmy popcorn i'll take your word for it joe sue says what do you think of the running back from alabama maybe pick 33 um yeah i mean i'm cool with running backs especially utility running backs that can play receiver out of the backfield for me if you're going to take a running back in the first two rounds he has to be able to help you in the passing game um, if he can't help you in the passing game, like dramatically, I'm talking like dramatically help you in the passing game. Um, I wouldn't take him in the first two rounds. Um, Charlie boy, I can't wear my UCF Jaguar shirt anymore. Quarantine bod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that Charlie boy. I feel that for sure. Um, look, man, whew, man, we have a pop and chat, but, uh, usually I like to run these shows like an hour. Um, so I'm probably going to wrap it up here soon. Um, Dude, you guys that are in the chat have been, like, awesome. Um, Robert Adsertz, would you rather have seven blue chip picks or 11 lotto tickets? I don't know, man. Lotto's pretty – the, the lotto's getting up there for sure. But I appreciate you guys um, being here. Um, Brent Papano, just thinking out loud, would you trade our first next year and a third for pits? Would anyone take it? Uh, I don't think anyone would take that. I mean, that's a lot. I don't know. But I, I think Pitts is going top five. And I and if I'm wrong, he's going six or seven. But the dude's going top seven, 100%. Um, yeah. Nick F says he'd be really mad if we took a running back before the third, unless it's ETN as our – again, if it's a guy that could get, help you in the backfield, a guy that can help you in the passing game, like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm here for, for sure. Um well, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. I love breaking down film. I hope you guys enjoyed the film breakdowns on the three interior defensive linemen. Um, we're just going to keep going with it. Every other day, we're going to be probably doing breakdowns. Um, I might just do like a general like chat conversation like tomorrow or the next day. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get a notification. I mean, that's that's super important so that you know uh, what's happening and, and you can get all the latest information and the news and the stories and things like that. Um, you guys are awesome. Man, Washington State Jags fan with the $50 donation earlier. Oh, man. Can't even tell you how thankful I am. Joe Rivera, 
thank you, man. Five dollar donation earlier. Look, you guys are the best, man. I do this because it's fun. I do this because it's uh, awesome hanging out with you guys. I love talking to Jags fans. Um, if it wasn't for the chat, I would have nothing to talk about. So I really appreciate you guys that are always here and always commenting with your, you guys have great takes. I promised you I'm going to do some research on some of the guys y'all brought up. I feel bad. I don't know much about them, but um, I don't know about everyone, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Um, Philip Butcher, Nick F, Charlie Boyd, Jimmy Popcorn, Brent, Nick, everyone can't, can't even get to all you guys enough. Um, seriously, man, you guys are awesome. Nick F says, send a tweet next time you go live on YouTube. Okay, that's fair. I can do that better. I can do that better. Jags Fan Cave, thanks for being here. Make sure to follow him. King David, I will keep it up, man. You too. Uh, 